All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to come here today to speak to you about the use of preoperative botulinum toxin A in the repair of complex ventral hernia. I have no disclosures. This is a slide simply demonstrating the large team of specialists with whom I work at Macquarie University Hospital, led by our uh, lead surgeon, Associate Professor Nabil Abraham. Now, BTA is a neurotoxin, which when purified has many clinical uses, and it has a long-standing safety profile. Botulinum toxin A, or BTA, when injected into a muscle, induces a flaccid paralysis of the targeted muscle, um, which can allow us to close defects, which is why I'm here today. Its onset, uh, it takes approximately two to three days. It reaches maximal effect after two weeks. And overall, it lasts about four to six months duration. Interestingly, it plays a role in pain processing and transmission and has been used in the past um, <coughs> in a patient intolerant of narcotic analgesics in post-operative analgesia after laparoscopic ventral hernia repair. Um, it also plays a role in delayed abdominal wall reconstruction after, a, after open abdomen management. Now, building on these innovations, we're beginning to show that BTA can be used in the elective setting to facilitate primary closure of complex and large incisional hernias. It's known by a few different names, chemical component paralysis, chemical component relaxation, chemical component separation, but they all mean essentially the same thing. What we're doing is showing that this relaxation, this paralysis, it's all reinforcing the same thing. Um, it's a very different entity from traditional component separation, but it performs a similar task. The difference is that it, this does not disrupt the integrity of the abdominal wall. Now, this is a typical example of one of our patients. She's presenting with a battle-scarred abdomen, seven previous hernia repairs. You can see that she's got mesh in situ, and she's overweight. Adequate workup prior to undergoing surgery is absolutely essential. She'll get baseline imaging. Smoking cessation is a prerequisite. Comorbidities are optimized, and only once she's satisfied all of the above criteria will she undergo injections of BTA. Our protocol involves six injections of BTA to the lateral abdominal wall muscles. The injections are done in the doctor's rooms in a single session, usually about one to four weeks preoperatively. Using ultrasound guidance, three sites are identified on each side of the abdomen as indicated on the diagram on the screen. The injections are performed under real-time ultrasound control and involve injecting into each of the three muscle belly, bellies of the lateral abdominal wall muscles, transversus abdominis, internal oblique, and in external oblique. And this same procedure is carried out at all six injection sites. When we started this program, we were initially using 300 units of botulinum toxin, Botox specifically, um, or an equivalent amount of Dysport. However, in an attempt to help clarify the optimal dose of BTA, we've started reducing our doses down to 200 units total. What we've been able to show is that there's been no statistically significant difference in the gains we've been able to achieve using 200 units as compared with 300 units. The injections themselves are generally very well tolerated. Most patients will complain of a feeling of distension or bloating, and some patients complain of a weak cough or a weak sneeze. In cases where these symptoms cause concern to patients, we can use an abdominal binder with some effect. To date, this program has been running since 2012, and we've had 56 patients run through our protocol. We've been able to perform this technique in patients as old as 84 years. The majority of our patients are overweight or obese. All hernias are either complex, and most are large and multi-recurrent. The maximum defect that we've been able to repair to date is 29 centimeters transversely. 
this scan is an excellent example of the effect of botulinum toxin. Now, if I can work out this, what we can see here is the baseline scan on the left. We've got the lateral oblique muscles. They're contracted, they're retracted, they're thickened. We've got a defect of 12.6 centimeters. On the right, we've got the after Botox scan. This is two weeks after injection, and we can see that the lateral oblique muscles have significantly elongated, they've thinned, the hernia defect has reduced, and we can see that the abdomen itself is retaining a far more anatomical shape than it was previously. At this point in time, our data is able to show that there's a mean gain of approximately four centimeters per side to the lateral oblique muscles after BTA injections. And this is in the unstretched abdominal wall. Uh, so these are scans at rest. We can achieve far more than the, those four centimeters during an operation, during closure. And this data is statistically significant. To date, all 56 hernias have been repaired under minimal tension. And all are repaired either laparoscopically or using laparoscopic open laparoscopic techniques, which generally utilize a seven centimeter gel hand port, uh, which we can use to closely inspect bowel or to peel off adherent bowel to mesh, um, whatever we need to do, and then continue with the laparoscopic portion of the procedure. We've had no instances of post-operative abdominal hypertension. We've had no problems with prolonged ventilation uh, after the operation, and we've had no instances of wound dehiscence. Our mean follow-up is 20 months, ranging up to 48 months. And as of two days ago, we have one possible hernia recurrence that's still being investigated, um, where a patient has come back with a clinically evident hernia at the superior edge of where her mesh should be. And whether this is truly a de novo hernia, whether it's due to mesh shrinkage, or whether it's a defect that we missed interoperatively is, like I said, still under investigation. This is an example of one of our patients. She's 56. She's had three previous mesh repairs, and she's come to us looking like this clinical photo on the right. She's got a suprapubic defect, which is 14 centimeters transverse, and a 57% loss of domain. So we've got a significant problem on our hands. We can see on the scan of the left, that's her baseline scan. She's got lateral oblique muscles, which are barely evident. They're contracted, they're retracted. There's very little we can do with that. However, after injection, we can see that her lateral obliques have significantly elongated, thinned, and it's produced a reduction in her hernia defect. This patient was closed, repaired primarily, using laparoscopic open laparoscopic techniques, once again, with a gel hand port within her hernia sac. Um, the two images on the right are post-operative images. One's a three-dimensional volume rendered image. Um, and the other one is showing her in an active maneuver crunching during the CT scan to show that there's no eventration, there's no hernia remaining. In summary, the use of botulinum toxin A in the preoperative setting is an emerging technique which has been demonstrated to relax and elongate the lateral abdominal wall muscles. And it does so without disrupting the integrity of the abdominal wall itself. BTA facilitates the approximation of fascial edges and it makes primary repair of the difficult hernia far more feasible. Thank you.